So machine hearing, I started working in this in about 2013. I'd examined a PhD thesis that was all about machine hearing. It was very new at that time. And I looked at that work and I, I realised quite quickly that nobody in that field had ever used deep neural networks. Nobody had used deep learning. Nobody had used convolutional neural networks to do the kind of machine hearing or sound event detection that was the forefront of that field at the time. So I started to use these deep neural network techniques and later convolutional neural networks, CNNs, in machine hearing. And I found it worked very well. And typically what we do is we analyze time series, waveforms. But if you start to analyze things in the time domain, you find very quickly that it's highly susceptible to noise. So we convert these waveforms into the frequency domain. If you create a frequency domain representation of a waveform, you end up with a spectrogram. And that suddenly goes from being a one-dimensional signal to a two-dimensional signal. In other words, it looks very much like an image. So once we manage to convert the sound into something that looks like an image, we can start to make use of image processing techniques when we do the AI. And there's a lot of AI techniques based around image processing. So once I discovered that and published it, the whole field opened up with all of these image processing techniques being tested and applied to the sound processing field. So in machine hearing, in, in the particular task of sound event detection, there's quite a lot of difficult issues. So one of those issues is unlike looking at a picture, in the real world, different sounds last for different lengths of time. So a, a wailing baby might wail for, well, hours. Um, a dog might bark for a couple of seconds. A clap lasts for less than a second. All of these are sounds. So if we're going to have a machine hearing system that is able to recognize these sounds, we need to first of all decide how long do we want to start looking at this image that's now a spectrogram. How, how much of it do we need to look at? If we create a system that's very good at looking at small segments of a spectrogram, it's probably not going to work when we extend it to a large spectrogram. And so far, no system has been able to get over this conundrum, this balance between short and long. The longer it is, it's either low resolution or extremely complex. Shorter tends to be higher resolution, but it doesn't capture any of these long-term time dependencies. So we know that the human brain is pretty good at understanding sounds, but it usually takes us a couple of seconds to really place an obscure sound. The other thing that humans are really good at is sounds that are overlapping. So say you have the sound of a washing machine, and while that's going on, a dog barks, woof, woof. There's two sounds at once. For a human, it's very obvious. We can easily disambiguate the two different sounds. And with our two ears, we can often detect from which locations they're coming from. But a computer currently isn't able to do that at all well. The computer would think that this is just a noisy washing machine or a dog in a noisy environment. So getting this real world aspect from overlapping sounds is really quite difficult in a computer. The other thing that computers are pretty terrible at doing is removing echo. There's always echo. In any human environment, there's some kind of echo. And in a, a room like where I'm sitting at the moment, it comes from the walls. The sound reflects back from the walls. We actually don't even hear the echo because it's usually less than about 100 milliseconds. We don't even hear it. Our brain doesn't even pick it up. But if you record yourself speaking in a room and you play it backwards, the echo becomes very obvious. And computers are not able to remove that echo effectively. Okay, not as effectively as a human being. So these three aspects are things that make machine 
hearing extremely difficult. When we start to create machine hearing systems, if we want to try to solve these problems, we tend make, to make systems that are extremely complicated. For example, if it's deep learning, they get to be very deep or very wide networks. And once we do that, that means there's lots of trainable parameters. And the more parameters we need to train, the more training data we need. Okay, we can get training data by just having a microphone and just taking it around everywhere we go. But when you're training a machine learning system, you generally need to have labeled data. And labeled data means that somebody has to say, hey, this sound is a dog barking. Hey, that sound is a washing machine. And that means humans need to listen to it and label it. This is expensive. And the practicality is that the amount of label data we have is very, very small. So if we want to just use labeled data in a machine hearing system, we have to make sure that system is really small and compact. But if we want to try and create a system that's bigger, then we either have to get more labeled data, which will cost, or we have to start using techniques that allow the machine learning system to train itself from unlabeled data. And that is the holy grail of machine hearing systems at the current time. I guess by the time you listen to this, I might have found a solution. Who knows? <laughs>